Kia ora team, welcome back to the 2.5 Genetic Variation and Change video series. This is video 3. In this video you'll be learning about mutagens, gametic mutations and somatic mutations. By the end of this lesson you should be able to list some mutagens that can cause DNA mutations, describe the consequences of gametic and somatic mutations, and describe how mutations can cause genetic variation. So in the previous video, in video 2, about genes and genetic variation, you learned that there are two major sources of genetic variation. The first being meiosis and sexual reproduction, and the other being about mutations. In this lesson, we're going to be focusing on the second course of variation, mutations in genes and chromosomes. A mutation is a sudden, permanent change in the base sequence of DNA in an organism. A mutation can be relatively small and within the scale of a gene, or the changes could actually be really large and in the scale of a chromosome. In level 2 biology, we tend to focus on the small-scale changes or mutations within a gene. These small-scale changes may be an addition, a deletion, or swapping of bases, which may result in a different protein being produced. I emphasize this word may because not all mutations cause changes in the protein and therefore not all mutations change the phenotype. In these two pictures here, it clearly shows two different types of mutation. This is the original sequence of DNA and in this mutated sequence you can see that there is a swapping of base. So a C base is swapped in place of this T base. In this scenario here, this is the original sequence. In the mutated DNA, these three bases have been deleted. So in both cases, the mutant DNA is different to the original, and it might cause a change in the phenotype. The effects or the consequences of mutations vary depending on where the mutation happens. It's important to know that some parts of the DNA are genes. And remember in video 2 that the order of nucleotides of a gene specifies or instructs the structure of that protein. So an, an altered or mutant gene will produce an altered or mutant protein. By the way, if the sequence of a gene is mutated or altered, that means the combination of alleles or the genotype of an organism will also be altered. In this picture here, you can see that this gene codes for a protein that has a function, which leads to the expression of a trait or a characteristic. This is the phenotype. If a mutation occurs in this gene, it will probably be harmful and may decrease the chance of an individual surviving and reproducing. So in this picture here, you can see that the DNA sequence has been changed from GCCG to GGGGC, which codes for a different protein that can't function and leads to the loss of this characteristic. Many harmful mutations can actually turn into cancers. Now it's also important to know that not all of the DNA codes for a gene. Some DNA doesn't code for a gene, and if mutations happen in this non-coding part of the DNA, then mutations can be neutral, or they can have no effect on protein function. If there's no effect on protein function, then there's going to be no effect on the characteristic or the phenotype. And on very rare occasions, mutations are beneficial and may actually increase the chance of an individual surviving and reproducing. But remember that this is very, very rare, as most mutations tend to be harmful or they tend to have no effect on the phenotype. So what causes mutations? Mutations can suddenly happen as a result of errors during DNA replication, which we learnt about in the 2.4 series. But mutations can also happen because of physical or chemical factors called mutagens. Examples of mutagens are ionizing radiation, like nuclear radiation from a nuclear fallout, or ultraviolet or UV radiation from the sun and tanning lamps. 
Ionizing radiation can also come from x-rays that are used for medical diagnoses and treatments. Ionizing radiation has been linked to thyroid cancers, skin cancers, and several leukemias, which are blood cancers. Mutagenic chemicals include tobacco smoke, alcohol, and fatty and processed foods, which are all carcinogenic chemicals consumed by humans. Other mutagenic chemicals include BPA in plastics and asbestos found in old buildings. And lastly, infectious agents like viruses and microorganisms like bacteria can mutate the DNA and also cause cancers. For example, the hepatitis B virus can cause liver cancer and the human papilloma virus, the HPV virus, can also cause cervical cancer in women. So let's say that my DNA in some of my cells got mutated because I was exposed to some of the mutagens we just talked about in this slide. Does that mean my children will inherit those mutations? If my mutation developed into a cancer, does that mean that my children will inherit that cancer? The answer is, it depends on where the mutation happened. Because not all mutations can be passed on. Not all mutations can be inherited by your children. There are two types of cells where mutations can happen. Somatic cells, body cells, or gametes, sex cells. Because of this, not all mutations can be inherited because only those mutations taking place in the cells that produce gametes can be inherited. So gametic mutations, um, mutations that happen in gametes, aren't just limited to the person or the individual they happened in. They can actually be inherited and transferred onto future generations. I um, mean, this is through sexual reproduction and fertilization. Whereas mutations that occur in body cells, so these are called somatic mutations, will not be inherited, but they can affect the individual during their lifetime. The important thing here is they can't be passed on to the offspring. So going back to what I said earlier, if a mutation happened in, let's say, my skin cell, a somatic cell, the mutation will not be passed on to my children because skin cells, the somatic cells, are not used during sexual reproduction. But if a mutation happened in the eggs, so the gametes, inside my ovaries, the mutation will be passed on to my children because eggs are used for sexual reproduction. So this photo here shows an example of a somatic mutation in a golden delicious apple. A golden delicious apple normally has a golden or greenish tinge for the apple skin. But in this apple, in this particular apple, a mutation occurred in the somatic cells of the part of the flower that eventually developed into this apple skin. The mutation caused half of the apple skin to turn red, while the other half wasn't mutated and it remained golden or green. Because the mutation happened in the somatic cells of this um, apple plant, any offspring of this apple plant will not inherit the mutation. So all the offspring will still have this golden green color and they will not be red. For this mutation to be passed on to the apple offspring, the mutation needed to have happened in the gametes, so in the sex cells of apples. And those sex cells are the pollen, the male gametes, and the ovules, the female gametes. Finally, I would like to point out the fact that mutations are the original source of all genetic information. Sexual reproduction, so meiosis, only produces new combinations of existing genetic information. It can't result in new genes, it can't make new alleles, and so it can't produce any new physical characteristics or phenotypes. All sexual reproduction does is shuffle stuff around, just chopping and changing things. Whereas mutations are the only source of new genetic information, new alleles, new genes, and new phenotypes. That's why mutations are so important in evolution, because mutations create new alleles and they form an important part of the evolutionary process. 
and I'll show you an example. So these dogs all have different phenotypes because they all have different observable traits, right? So they have different face shapes, they have different coat colors, they have different eye colors, they have different ear shapes, and so on. And this is because at some point in the long history of the dog species, mutations happened in many different genes, resulting in new alleles, resulting in new proteins being produced, and resulting in new physical features or phenotypes being observed. If mutations weren't a thing, if mutations didn't happen, there wouldn't be different alleles for dog hair texture, hair color, face shape, um, size, and so on. And if mutations weren't a thing, all of these dogs would look the same. There wouldn't be any genetic variation between them. So Kapai, you've made it to the end of the video. So by now you should be able to list some mutagens that can cause DNA mutations, Describe the consequences of gametic and somatic mutations and describe how mutations cause genetic variation. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.